A very good day to you, and this is Inspiration with Felix Dazi. I trust you are having an amazing time. Well, today, as always, we are here to inspire you. We are here to hear some wonderful conversations that will spur you on to greater heights. And if you're watching us on television, we want you to look at the number on your screen. This is where you can send your comments to. This is where you can actually ask questions um, concerning this interview. Also, if you're watching us um, on Truth TV, we want to say welcome to you also on youtube and as inspiration with felix dazi inspiration with felix dazi we want you to go to our youtube channel and you subscribe you like and then you actually share well welcome to a time of knowledge bliss my guest for today, um, he is part of the organization that has gathered youth from countries, different countries in Africa, just for them to be inspired to change the socioeconomic um, sector of their countries. And yes, I'm about to show, I'll show some uh, before we wrap up. I'll get to let you know how they have been impacted so much as you, you heard them or you're about to hear them. Um, you'll find out that these people have been charged to go change a lot of things in their countries, to become change agents in their countries. And my guest, I'll let him introduce himself all the way from Nigeria. And uh, I am supposed to learn from him right after. Uh, so that <laughs> because I, I, I had his uh, quintessential leader. Uh, so I'll have to learn from him right after this. Um, interview but you're welcome sir thank you good to see you it's great to be here all uh, right um I, I always say that i love people to introduce themselves so that i don't introduce them wrongly yeah. if i don't bring the doctor uh, yeah. i will be questioned if i don't bring the <laughs> professor i will be questioned uh, some will prefer master yeah. instead of mister yeah. so the floor is yours please introduce yourself and let's get going okay so uh hi um ayodile akone is my name uh I'm a feminist, a gender advocate. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, mediapreneur, on our personality. And within the scope of conversation today, so let me just limit it to uh, the Secretary General, Honorable Secretary General, serving this year for the International Youth Diplomacy Conference okay. this year. So. It's an honor to be here. All Thank right. you for having me. Thank you for deciding to do this with us. Well, on inspiration, we, we like to um, first find out um, what inspired you to actually stand for the position of the Secretary General at the International, as you can see behind us, International Youth Diplomacy Conference, IYDC, under the IPEC, right? Yes, IPEC. IPEC Global. I, so I, Global. I, I, okay. I'll just quickly talk a bit about the organization, uh, innovation for... Uh, Empowerment and Development, uh, uh, IFA Global. Uh, they are the body, the international organization that is responsible for uh, programs like International Youth Diplomacy Conference, IYDC, mm -hmm. and many other programs. And IYDC is basically a platform to gather African youth from all over the world to learn diplomacy. Now, yep. diplomacy is not a terrain that a lot of people are familiar with. Okay. You really do not understand saying you appoint someone as an ambassador, as an eye commissioner to another mm -hmm. nation, say a diplomat, or a diplomatic delegation of your country to the United Nations. Okay. You really do not understand what they do. Mm -hmm. You do not understand the tenets, you know, the lingua and all of that. And it's one thing that is very important to be able to help. I, I, I always say mm -hmm. that diplomacy is the reason why the world is not in World War Three right now. Diplomacy. Yeah, diplomacy. Okay. All right. So the, the principle and the skill of diplomacy is what has kept us at peace right now. Okay. And some of them might be thinking, oh, yeah, we have you, Ukraine and Russia war. Mm -hmm. But diplomacy is the reason why it's not as bad right. as we have imagined that it is right now. So right. I think it's a big deal and we need to uphold tenets. We need to train more people to be diplomatic. And diplomacy, I'm... Uh, okay, yeah. let, let me find out for the lame person. Um, the lame person. You talk about diplomacy. All you are thinking as an ambassador sent somewhere to work, yeah. appointed by the government. What, what do you mean when you talk about diplomacy? Okay, so it's a skill. Okay. It's a skill that is acquired. It's a skill that also earns your position. Uh, there are uh, people known as diplomats, mm -hmm. which means you are representing, assigned mm -hmm. representing your country mm -hmm. in another country, right? You represent the 
country's concerns, the position of the country in terms of uh, economy, mm -hmm. bilateral relations, international relations, security, which security, is a big, okay. big deal right now in the world, okay. in another country. So you are the contact person of that country in another country. So okay. you could have uh, a diplomat, you know, from, uh, for instance, Nigeria, in okay. Ghana. In Ghana, uh, okay. So if anything wants to happen, or the Ghana Eye Commission wants to relate with Nigeria, mm -hmm. they relate with me, and I'm supposed to take their messages back to the country. So I okay. represent it. All right. But also, diplomacy is a skill. It's a skill that seeks to find a common ground right a common ground where both parties if we have two parties or more can always have or find their interest acceded to mm -hmm. it's a common ground diplomacy uh, against all odds is not uh, butt licking uh, it's mm -hmm. not kissing ass <laughs> <laughs> if that word is allowed diplomacy is simply seen from the 69 position i see six you see nine I'm not wrong to see six, you're not wrong to see nine, okay. right? But what will, the skill that helps me to come down to your position and then to see that, oh, you're seeing nine and I'm seeing six. And so we're both not wrong. Okay. We only want to be seen. Right. We have a goal, we have a sight, or something that we need to do. That's what diplomacy is. So a lot of people who do not have that skill, that knowledge, that capacity, mental capacity to be able to do that, you know. Oh, it, that's it requires what, a lot of mental capacity. A, a, right? lot, a lot of it. I a mean, lot of capacity. A lot of mental capacity. <laughs> some, some degree of intelligence. Intelligence, you know? exactly. That's why everybody cannot just be a diplomat. Okay. Everybody cannot just be a diplomat. All right. So it, it requires a level of intelligence, a level of skill to be able to manage people. And that is so that we do not have crisis, mm -hmm. full blown crisis okay. between nations of the world. Normally, when we talk about diplomacy, um, we normally think it's about uh, the president deploying people who have almost retired from government service. But here we are in Ghana, yourself and the group um, that is organizing the International Youth Diplomacy Conference. Global. Uh, okay, IFEC Global have uh, gathered a lot of young people from different nations. Now, let me find out why this? Why choose young people? Why choose um, people who are um, students, university graduates, and I, I, I barely um, have seen people who are very old. I'm seeing a, a lot of young people and young at heart, people that are young at heart participating, and you can hear the wisdom that they communicate. Why, why the young people, the okay. youth? So the, the youth uh, signify the strength for the future. Okay. Uh, the aged ones are blessed with abundant wis wisdom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's why you would rarely see young diplomats, right? Okay. But then, uh, in actual fact, if we keep developing the elderly ones mm -hmm. and neglect the younger ones, then the wisdom of the elderly will die with the generation exactly. of the elderly. And then the young ones will be left to craft their own depths of wisdom. All right. So that's why IFED Global does this every single year. Okay. As a matter of fact, this is the seventh year they're organizing the International Youth Diplomacy Conference. And our goal is to be able to instill that culture okay. of diplomacy. Uh, not so, you know, we use the term diplomats in training. Right. Diplomatic training, yeah. okay. So it means that if you attend a couple of uh, modern United Nations conferences where you are taught in the act of diplomacy, the skills of diplomacy, as opposed to modern United Nations uh, organizations, uh, the floor uh, proceedings, the committee sessions, which actively engages you, right? What it does is it puts you in the position of that ambassador who represents your country that you really have no idea what they do. I mean, a lot of us question how ambassadors are paid. Well, what do they do? You know, what do they do? <laughs> and they, they seem to be paid. To pay, yeah, some, exactly. You know, exactly. and so you've always wondered what are the responsibilities of these individuals? What are the responsibilities of these individuals? How heavy are they? You know, you're always wondering why does the government pay so much mm -hmm. premium to them in terms of even cash and the rewards like that. So you're put in that position as a young person, either as a student, right, mm -hmm. as a, you know, a working class, because we have a lot of working class working people. Working class I, people. I'm not, a, I'm not a student. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a student of life. You okay. Know, so I, 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 a student at you know, uh, the yeah. University of Life. Yeah, the University of Life. You know, so, and uh -huh. then, and then you, you learn. You learn, okay. You learn. So in acti actively, so we have an appointments, you know, the general, general assembly 
president, right? okay. uh, vice president of the General Assembly, just the way they have it at the United Nations. Okay. Just the way. That's why it's called a model United Nations conference, right? Okay. So we have the president of the General Assembly, okay. we have the vice president, all right? And then we have the secretary general, uh -huh. right? Just like we have the current secretary general of the uh, United Nations, Antonio Guterres. Okay. That's the shoe that I'm feeling right now. Okay. All right, as the secretary general okay. for the MU and IYDC for this year. All okay. right. So we simulate, so we have delegates from all over Africa mm -hmm. who we have assigned countries mm -hmm. and assigned topics okay. right this year we looked at uh, sustainable development and climate change the impact you know that youths have to play in sustainable development the goals okay. and climate change so okay. we have crafted for committees four committees that we're simulating world trade organization who security council cop 26 to which is more like um, um I think something around uh, security. No, I, I think it's different from security. I can't remember right now. And then the press corps. The press corps is not simulating this year because they are uh, the media phase okay. for the activities this year. So they are reporting and uh, doing reportings and videos and all of that. So just the way you have it at the United Nations. So delegates are prepared position papers okay. that they prepare and present at the floor, the general assembly floor. Right. Okay. But that's what's happening and that's where all the laughter is coming okay. from you know so okay. so and then we adopt motions resolutions right all right conveying back to the general assembly mm -hmm. and then you know we present it to the house adopt a motion have a communique just the same way united nations Nation. does that okay. all right so now in in, in the length and the breadth of time and in the depth of the process you're able to see that diplomacy is not a skill that comes by easily. Mm -hmm. You're able to appreciate what people, ambassadors from your countries, the president of the country, diplomatic uh, delegation from your countries, are doing consistently on the United Nations floor to ensure that the world is not in full-blown crisis. Okay. Right? Uh, so if you've been following the proceedings from the United Nations over the Ukraine and Russia war, mm -hmm. you notice that the United Nations have been meeting back to back where you are the president of Ukraine constantly appealing for support mm -hmm. to United Nations borders, America, and you know, so it, it's like that. Mm -hmm. And then and the United Nations with its power appealing, you know, to the president to on the other side to ensure that he brings down these hostilities, they met out sanctions, you know. These are the Yeah, things. there were a lot of sanctions, sanctions I remember against, at the beginning, exactly. Yes, uh, sanctions just so they can wield we down his power. Mm -hmm. That's how important the United Nations is. And what we do is to model that. And we introduce young people into this process so that they now have a picture, replicate that. So as much as we understand that they cannot automatically become diplomats of their nations. So you say they're diplomats in training, but also we understand that that skill helps them to be able to foster peace, unity, and development, sustainable development in their countries. All right, now, now I've seen major activities that have been carried out yes. right here. Um, let's talk about, um, I've seen the model United Nations, the Elders Forum Special Committee session, the social and ambassadorial visits, the yes. career and personal seminars, ambassadorial um, dinner and awards, diplomatic training, global village and exhibition, African fashion nights. I am interested in career and personal seminars yeah. um, because in Africa we get to have the challenge of employment yeah. a lot, of unemployment and employment a lot. Mm. Um, these career guidance, how uh, or career and personal seminars, how has it shaped the lives of the youth who have come in for conferences like this? Okay, so it, it's my fifth year attending international. Fifth youth. year. Yeah. So wow. you have to go through the ranks. Uh -huh. you, know, you just don't come to be a part of the, <laughs> year. Uh, the first year. You're, you're yeah. the secretary general. Wow. Right? So you have to build experience, even attended mm -hmm. other model United Nations conferences, maybe the ones in the UK, mm -hmm. writing in Europe in mm -hmm. China, you have international MUNs. And by the way, Africa Global is one of the top, I, IYDC is one of the top MUNs in Africa, one okay. of the top Model United Nations conferences in Africa. We have more in the world, right? Okay. And so it's my fifth year, and I remember very well uh, mm -hmm. the first time I came, uh -huh. we had uh, Dr. Sekusi. You know, Dr. Say, yeah, Dr. Say, yeah. Very sound, brilliant. But for me, as an Nigerian, a young man at the time, it was my <laughs> first time meeting him. 
Uh -huh. And then I heard him how he spoke so brilliantly mm -hmm. about entrepreneurship, uh, about the power of the creative mind, about accessing opportunities, mm -hmm. about unnessing and sustaining opportunities, about being distinct within the workplace, you know, or creating opportunities when it looks like opportunities do not exist. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that these words talked to me and gave me sleepless nights. <laughs> until, until I started doing things uh -huh. and then living life in that and, and, mm -hmm. and my life has changed. I hold him in high esteem uh, for forever for the thoughts that he shares. Share. And so these are the avenues and opportunities that we open delegates to from all over the world. Sound professionals. Okay. proven track record okay. amazing individuals who are not just within ghana known within ghana but also have built a worldwide profile for okay. themselves right even in, in terms of study professionals uh, mm -hmm. in terms of study so uh we bring them and we expose these delegates to okay them, right mm -hmm. we expose these delegates to their wealth of experience beautiful delivery and words and of course uh their experiences too we give them opportunity to ask questions okay so they don't they don't just come and pour down what they have learned or what they know mm -hmm. we give them opportunity to synergize and most importantly network so i had imagine mm -hmm. i have dr osikosi's uh contact in my network okay. or, uh, having a relationship with someone like that mentorship too so these are the things that we uh i have uh, i suppose african delegates to that will come and it will amaze you that we have delegates come from burundi mm -hmm. delegates come from south africa Africa. Okay. Delegates come from the Gambia, Somaliland, Somalia, Ethiopia, Guinea. Okay. You know, and so many amazing countries. Talking about delegates, I spoke to some of the delegates uh, from Burundi. Yeah. I spoke to South Africa, and I think I spoke to Kenya. Mm -hmm. All right. So can we take a look at it? Well, here at the IYDC, that is the International Youth Diplomacy Conference, and I will be talking to some of um, the um, attendees and also the delegates that have come from all over Africa just to experience culture, just to be educated, just to be inspired and encouraged to make Africa better. My name is Felix Dazi, and I will be talking. To to these um, delegates finding out the experience in Ghana. To you. Your name, sir? Uh, my name is Eliseus Bamhodineza. I'm from Burundi, as you have just said. Um, I, I'm from the northern part of Burundi, in a province known as Kirundo, Kirundo province, yeah, on the border between uh, Burundi and Rwanda. Yeah. Let me first ask you, why did you decide to come for IYDC? Uh, well, um, I decided to come to attend this conference because um, I, I saw it as an opportunity to learn. Uh, I'm a student in international relations and I'm focusing on diplomacy and foreign policy as my concentration. So um, I saw this as, um, I would say, an occasion for me to learn to, to uh, enhance the skills that I get in class get to see the practicality of what we learn in class, but also to network with uh, people from different uh, corners of Africa and um, hopefully get to have that meaningful f friendship along the way that will be uh, helpful to make change we want in the continent. Yeah. Right, that's great. Now, let me find out what you've learned so far. Um, have you learned something and what are you taking back home to Burundi? Yes, um, I have already I have already learned uh, lots of things. Uh, first, from my friends. Uh, for instance, yesterday during the, the fashion night, um, I was kind of shocked <laughs> because I was uh, asked um, where I'm from, and then I said I'm from Burundi, and uh, some of the delegates were like, "Oh, Burundi is a country." Wow. And they never knew about Burundi. Yeah, so um, I feel like it's uh, it's re it was. Um, something to do to be here for me because I took this an opportunity to put Burundi now on the map because I, 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 I believe now those people have now known that Burundi actually exists. Um, now from the, the first part of the today's General Assembly, um, I have learned uh, that we have to change, we have to move from analog to digital if we really want to compete with the rest of the world because now the world is going digital and and as I always, I always say, I don't think there's anything uh, digital that Africa has, has uh, done. I would say it's something sustainably digital that 
belongs to Africa. We all do just copying from what others have designed and we try to adapt. So it's up to us now to, uh, to design our own, uh, own stuff, our own uh, device, our own tools that we can use to actually leverage from this uh, digital world we are living in. All right. Thank you so much uh, for talking to us. Thank you. All right. We're still here at the International Youth Diploma Conference, uh, IYDC, and I am talking to uh, one of their delegates uh, all the way from Lesotho. Lesotho. <laughs> well, let's talk about um, your experience here. Uh, how's your experience been? Um, first of all, thank you for having me. My name is Gabitili Duka. I am from Lesotho. It is a very beautiful country. Uh, Southern Africa. So my experience so far has been really good. I got to interact with uh, other African youth and we networked, ex exchanged ideas and it is a very impactful and I'm hoping to implement some of the things that I've learned from this conference. Right. What are some of the things that you've learned? Um, some of the things that I've learned right now, we are from the diplomatic lecture, so we talked about how the youth can participate politically. So I've learned that the youth, we have to be patriotic first of all, we have to love our countries. So I intend to teach and help engage other youth from my country so that we can love our country and take it further economically. It's been great talking to you. Um, what's your advice to the youth that are watching us on Inspiration? Um, young people, our time is now. Enough is enough with um, all the political leaders or all the political shenanigans that have been going on. And we have to act now. We have to act now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And we'll still be speaking to uh, many more from different countries, finding out their experiences so far at the International Youth Diplomacy Conference right here in uh, the University of Ghana, Legon, where they have come to share their experiences, where they've come to also network and also build on a platform for development. This is one platform that talks about the youth getting actually involved in the things that has to do with decision making in Africa. All right. Well, I'm, I still have um, some of the delegates from IYDC, and she's all the way from um, Kenya, Nairobi, right? All right. Please tell us your name. My name is Esther Wangai. Okay. Esther Wangai. Esther, tell us um, what has been your experience so far. Uh, it's been so good. I always had Ghana is a beautiful country. Well, that statement is affirmed. It's so beautiful. The people are so friendly, and it's a very clean town. I must say, it's very clean. Yes. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. And have you learned something? Ah, yes, I've learned so many things. I have met people. We are 21 nationalities in this conference. So I've met people from the Gambia. I've met people from Sierra Leone. So yes, I have learned so many things. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, your final words to those who are in Ghana? Uh, let's keep the spirit. Uh, we've been told that we learn from the scars of those who went before us. Uh, it's not time to keep on lamenting that the politicians are not doing this for us, the leaders are not doing this for us. It's time for us to take action. Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, you so much. Sana. All right. Thank you in Swahili. Yeah. <laughs> we welcome, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So you came for the International uh, Youth Diplomacy Conference, right? Yes. All right. Sure. And this is your sixth time. Sixth, sixth time. Sixth. Yeah, I, I only did not uh, attend the maiden conference, uh -huh. the first one, but I've been attending uh, since then. Yeah. Right. And you're from Harare. Harare, yes. Harare, yes. Sure. So tell us about your name and then your experience when you come for um, programs like this, the International Youth Diplomacy Conference. Uh, my name is Alpha uh, from Zimbabwe, like you said. And, uh, you know, the experience has been good. Uh, each and every time I come here, uh, the experience has always been good. Uh, interneting with uh, youths from all over Africa, the business people, the entrepreneurs, and uh, young politicians. And, you know, the experience has been quite amazing. And uh, since then, we've, I've gained a lot of experience, uh, you know, how to tackle problems and having such a platform for African youths 
to be discussing issues uh, pertaining to African development, African politics, uh, the problems that we face as Africans, and trying to so to come up with African solutions, homegrown solutions. It has been uh, quite amazing. So for me, it's been uh, quite amazing, and 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 it's an experience that I'll forever cherish because it has been a wonderful platform for me. Hey. So let, let me ask you, um, what are you going to do with this knowledge um, that has been shared today? Because uh, Dr. Kwabnai Japon shared some very sensitive knowledge. Um, what are you going to do with the knowledge that you have received today from this program? Obviously, uh, go and uh, go back and, and see what you can do. And uh, maybe probably mobilize other uh, youths uh, to make sure that we do our part. Because... What was raised there is very important, that we need to do our part as youth. We need to be seen to be doing something, to be involved in every aspect of our of life, uh, politically, in business, and in all other aspects. We need to be seen to be, to be involved. So I'll go back and uh, probably try to mobilize other youths and make sure we uh, we act accordingly and, yeah, and make sure that, uh, and hopefully I think that will be uh, that will help a lot in trying to uh, to solve the problems that we are facing as Africans. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, it's quite a pleasure uh, talking to you and being in Ghana, uh -huh. and it's quite been a blessing. It's our second home, and 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 I really enjoy it when I'm in Ghana. It's like it's like I'm in Zimbabwe. <laughs> don't even need a visa to be here. So it's uh -huh. it's yeah. Have you tried any Ghanaian food yet? Of course. Okay, which one? Which one has been your favorite? Of course, you know that. Which one? Do you I know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the jollof of your, the jollof, of course. Jollof, of course. Jollof. Enjoy the jollof. Oh yeah, it's good. Yeah. You have something like that in Zimbabwe? No, we don't have jollof, but yeah, but rice we have other dishes, yeah, that we we do, but not the jollof. So we, I will spare me on the the Jolofo debate. I am not for it because we don't have. Yeah, but I've heard some Zimbabweans are now uh, trying to to have their own kind of Jolofo. Though it's not popular, it's here and there. Yeah, but when I come to Zimbabwe, I'll make you Jolofo. Sure. Good to see you. I'm happy. I'm happy to see you too. Right. Thank so you. Your, your name and um, why you purposely came for this meeting? Yeah, I'm Mohamed um, Jalo, and of course, I am came all the way from Sierra Leone. And my intention to come here is very simple, you know, to be, as you said earlier, to be inspired, you know, to be motivated in order to become a better African, uh, in order to contribute towards um, the African development, the African dream. And of course, in order to ensure that we network, you know, imagine here we have delegates from almost all over Africa. Yesterday to today, I've met with over 15 delegates from different countries in Africa. And I'm looking forward to meet with more people today. So what is more important is the fact that we are coming, we are galvanizing to brainstorm. We are galvanizing to think about how we can take Africa forward, about how we can learn from each other's challenges. Because Africa as a continent, wherever you go, we have similarities. You know, the similarities outweighs the differences. You know, uh, and that means our challenges are so similar. So the problem you have in Ghana, it's almost similar to the problem in Liberia. It's almost similar to the problem in Sierra Leone, to Nigeria. Poverty is in the midst of plenty. But one thing that is so important is the fact that we have a very youthful population. You know, Africa as a continent has over 60% of its population that are young people. So that means, continental-wise, there is no other continent that has such an opportunity, which is very big for us. And of course, this is the International Youth Diplomacy Conference that brings all of these youths together from diverse African countries so that we can discuss our challenges, we can learn from each other and find ways to ameliorate or solve these problems. Okay. And the purpose to which you came for, has it been achieved? Well, I would say it's a process. It's a you process. know, we are here for three days. <laughs> yeah, we are here for three days. Three days. But so far I can say that what I have learned and the people I have networked with, it's, it's a very big accomplishment, very big success. So even if I return today, I'll, I'll go back with something. Can I come and pack your bags for you? No, no, I have to, I have to, I have to complete this one. Complete yeah, I have to complete this one because there are so many things left. Um, of course, tomorrow we are going to start the committee sessions proper. And of course, at the end of the day, we network, we enjoy ourselves with dinner and other things. So, yeah. so I have so much to learn around Ghana, you know, because so, so I don't need to be in a rush. Yeah. 
All right, all right. Thank, thank you. you so much yeah, uh, for um, joining us thank to so talk right here on Inspiration. Thank you. Let me find out your name and um, where you came from. Okay, so my name is Miss Beauty Nahami Kanwe, a delegate from Liberia. From Liberia, which part of Liberia? Peaceville. Peaceville. All right. Now let's talk about this uh, program. Uh, how many times have you attended the International Youth Delegate Conference? So this is my first time attending this program. Yes. Have you learned something so far? Any experience so far? Yes. Uh, last night we had a global village activities and it was great. As I watched all other countries portraying their culture and that was really great. Yes. Have you learned something so far from uh, the talks that came from the speakers? What are some of the things that you think you are taking home today? Yeah, so, so from the speaker, I learned that we as youth of Africa, if we must see the change that we hope for, we should stand out to the truth with integrity. Yes. Truth and integrity. Yes. What do you have to tell those who are watching this on Inspiration? What do you have to tell them? So those who are watching me, I want to say to the youth that we must stand out. And not only look up to the government to do it for us, but we can do it for ourselves. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Thank you. We're still here at the International Youth Diplomacy Conference, and I'll be talking to Imano okay. from Nigeria. From Nigeria. All right. <laughs> Nigerian or the chop I thought we know the guy last. <laughs> no, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what have you learned so far? Wow, well, for me, it's, it's been a wonderful experience. You know, um, this is my very first time mingling with Africans, you know, from different parts of, of, um, of, of the continent. Um, it's great. The, the, the setting, everything is well organized. And um, um, for, for the fact that, you know, we're trying to come together as Africa to talk about the change that we all anticipate, you know, the change that we all deserve. So, so far for me, it's been a wonderful experience, you know, mingling with friends, brothers from different countries, you know, coming together to talked about Africa development and then uh, and way forward for Africa. It's been a wonderful experience. All right. So um, let me ask you my final question. Um, the things that you have learned, do you think they are practicable in real life? Yes, of course, they are practicable, you know. Uh, um, so far, I talked about um, change, you know, among African um, youth. Um, from the topic so far, what we've discussed and what we've learned, is they are really practicable, not what we just go. Because um, it's one thing is coming around to learn, another thing is to implement what you have learned so far. So uh, for me, I think they are all practicable and it's workable. Especially if we are de determined as youth. Yes, it's really practicable. Yeah. Thank you so much. And um, your final words to the youth in Africa, especially in Nigeria, what do you have to tell them? Yes, well, you know, my, 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 my final words to the youth in Africa is that it's, it's time for Africa to rise. It's time for Africa to stand up to, to its heritage, to its original heritage. It's time for us to create that change among Africans and among youths, especially. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Delegates all the way from? The Gambia. The Gambia. All right, so what's your name? I am Mami Sirajan. Right. Let me find out, what have you learned so far coming for the International Youth Diplomacy Conference? Okay, before saying that, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity and also all the committees of the IYDC. It's a great place of having young Africans coming together, interacting. Um, right now, for my experience, I would say that it's so exciting because I've, ne I've seen people, youths from different countries in different countries, particularly Africa, coming together as one, sharing our cultural things. Like yesterday, we had Global Fashion Night, so we see different cultures. It's beautiful, like coming to Africa coming together, interacting, sharing ideas, and participating in our sustainable development in, on how to improve our countries and bring in Africa as one common goal to be in the next level like other countries. Thank you so much. So what do you have to tell those who are watching us? Your final word. Um, I would like them to be participating in this IYDC uh, because it's very educative. Like there's a session going on. We've been teaching how to develop our career, how to um, take out Africa in another level. Like it's so something that we African youth should be having something like this. Like every year or every six months because it's very encouraging. It helps us a lot. 
Thank you so much. We're still here at the International Youth Diplomatic Conference, and I am here with my brothers. Yo, South Africans will say they are looking dapper. They're looking dope. They're looking dope. All right. <laughs> and uh, I have another brother with me. You're also looking amazing. 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 Well, let me find out your names and uh, what made you come for the IYDC. All right. Um, I go by the name of Mise Makabong and I'm um, from South Africa on behalf of all other South Africans and Ghanaians and every other nation which is we are in Africa so it's a global village so I'd, I'd, I'd greet everyone <laughs> um, and 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 on the presence and the current state of affairs of Africa as Africans firstly we need to sort our own problems by ourselves it's time to ju jump on the bandwagon and roll up the sleeves we are actually jumping we are actually actively doing that by ourselves as we speak um, and talks of sustainable youth development have, have have been on the table and sustainability is a a concept because establishment is a different co concept than the sustainability so you establish something then you sustain it so what we're we looking Africa I'll, 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 I'll condone it on establishment we have a lot of things that we have established but we've maintained we've, we've, we haven't managed to sustain so sustainability of whatever it is our economy um, our social political issue our climate change everything should be sustainable so for climate change we go green for economy we make more other economic moves which are more sustainable as to us and we are the youth we can't we can't rely on blaming the predecessors for what they didn't do so it's time we we, we, we roll up our sleeves and and, and and start working thank you my leader all right, <laughs> all right so let, let me find out with you too your name and where you're coming from uh, okay uh, uh -huh. my name is Ahmed Suleiman Duale I'm come from Somaliland uh, it's uh, second time to come on, on IYDC and especially Ghana Accra. Um, it's a great, uh, great pleasure for me to come here. And I would like to thank you, uh, the, all the African young people, they come in, in here, especially um, the young uh, people in Ghana and IYDC. And this um, how to welcome in the city of Ghana. And uh, this conference is uh, its first time uh, to, to come first time to come from Somaliland uh, and as we know as uh, Somaliland is a uh, and it's still independent country okay. and as a uh, uh, 1991 we uh, we state uh, we uh, we come to state and this uh, conference will be uh, to to promote to promote an, uh, an young african leaders uh, li 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 okay. and also and have you something uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let, let, let me ask you. What have you learned so far? What has been your experience, and what are you taking to Somaliland? Okay, uh, I have experience on how to. Um, it's first time uh, to come abroad. Okay. So I come from the ma different countries in Africa, Ghana, Nigeria. So they have social socialized, and they have uh, to to great pleasure for me. Okay. And I would like to thank you how to nicely and how to respectfully right. to welcome into this area. I'm, I'm about to speak some Zulu, but I have forgotten my Zulu. How do we say welcome in Zulu? Saubon. 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 Yes, yeah, Saubon. So which one is that? Siabonga. Siabonga is thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Siabong. Saubon Jan. <laughs> My brother is from South Africa and uh, he came for the International uh, Youth um, uh, Delegate Conference and uh, Diplomatic uh, Conference and um, I'll be finding out um, his experience so far. How has it been so far? Um, it has been a wonderful experience. Uh, the conference started yesterday even though we arrived um, a day before. Uh, we welcomed well uh, the beautiful faces of Ghana and the smiles. Um, you know, the, the, the hospitality itself, it, it, it is great. Um, second to that, yesterday we enjoyed the Global Village, of which is part of the program whereby we, uh, you know, showcase and display our cultures from across Africa where we're coming from. And there was a moment my brother and I had when the South African anthem was played. You know, I think for the first time we did, uh, uh, you know, it hit us that maybe we've t we've taken our national anthem for granted, but now we're in another country and it's played, and we have to display how we respect it and all of that. Uh, it was not just any other day of playing that national anthem. Today, um, you know, the speeches that have been given by the speakers in, in, in the opening of, of 
uh, the conference. They are just wonderful uh, to a point whereby it has expanded our minds on how we think and how we should approach um, uh, our challenges that we are facing in Africa and also to find solutions because I think why we are here is for us not just only to depict uh, problems that we are having in Africa, but to also provide solutions to the problems that we are having in Africa. Because you remember that our problems are not isolated. Um, you know, our isolated, uh, I mean, our problems are similar in a way. And how Ghana approaches climate change, how Ghana approaches um, gender-based violence, and so on and so forth. You know, and we might take a few of those solutions and go and apply them back home, you know, so that we have sustainable solutions to a united Africa. Right, that's great. But, but um, I didn't ask you your name. So what's your name and uh, where you're coming from? I'm Yongama Zikebe from South Africa. And we just celebrated Nelson Mandela, International Nelson Mandela Day wow. on Monday when I arrived in Ghana. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, I'm in the world of um, the Honorable President Kwame Nkuruma, who was a great friend of uh, Dr. Nelson Mandela. So um, we are, you know, as young people, we are standing on shoulders of, of, of great leaders. And I believe that as united as we are, in, in this conference because one thing that I've seen is that we are united as young Africans and then we should not allow any divisions to get in between us. Instead we should make sure that um, um, you know we harness that unity and we work towards uh, making sure that it stays and it becomes um, a great force for the change of Africa because we want one Africa, one currency and we move freely in Africa. Tell us, um, what have you experienced so far? Yeah, what I've experienced so far was about um, the issue of climate change and um, how um, it has affected the inflation in the price of the food and how we can curb it. Because um, when we look at climate change generally, it affects uh, the price of the, um, the food and it has, so it has been difficult for average citizens you know, to, to uh, survive. Because when we look at Nigerians now, at this moment, particularly because I'm from Nigeria, um, even though a middle class spends 50% of his income monthly on feeding, so how, how do you expect that kind of middle class to have uh, the opportunity to cater for other peoples when the poor are even spending over 120 percent of their income monthly on feeding? So we need to uh, um, at, uh, like um, pay much attention to uh, the climate change so that we can be able to reduce the price of food, like to be more comfortable, more conducive for other citizens to afford feeding and be able to cater for some other effects too as well. Thank you so much. You're still here at the International Youth Diplomacy Conference and um, we're talking to one of the keynote speakers that inspired um, the youth today, that is Mr. Leonard. All right. Um, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. All right. How has the experience been so far? It's awesome. It's awesome. I like the vibrancy and then the determination from the youth to want to learn and take so much from this program. So I'm excited. And let, let me find out, you delivering your speech to the youth, what are some of the things that you noted in the delivering of um, your speech? One of the things I, uh, I think is a key thing that I noted is the ability to involve the youth in governance because the youth has been not be included. Okay? And then if you look at the youth today, um, they are more into technology. The old people in governance are not into the only way we can bridge the gap and then generate revenue out of technology where the world is heading is by involving the youth. And then you could tell the demeanors from all the youth that they all feel neglected within um, the governance as far as Africa is concerned. So what do you have to tell those who are watching this, um, the youth who are battling with unemployment? Because this seems to be one of the key things for someone to be influential in, in government and all the person has to start from somewhere. But now in Africa, that's one of the things that we are battling with, especially in Ghana. On, and unemployment, what do you have to tell those who are uh, the youth that are battling with it? And what do you have to tell them? Okay, the challenge with the unemployment is... Um, the youth have to take advantage for every opportunity that they have. Like I said in the keynote speaker, I was in university and I did refuse collection in UK to pay my bills to keep me going. Rather than the youth saying, I've just finished university, I just want to sit at home and then basically wait for government to give me an opportunity. I'm looking for government jobs. Every little opportunity that comes in the way, whether it be in an attachment, you need to volunteer to do things for free and then out of that you get to build a network, out of that you get to build the experience, then we can be competitive. Secondly, we want to be able to take a lower salary. Okay, you don't say I'm a graduate student, so I'm looking for 2000 If somebody can pay you 800 700 take it. You build the experience over three months, six months, a year. Whilst you're there, you're still 
keep looking for unemployment, and then you do the migration. But either than that, you become a higher risk if you're just sitting at home and you don't want to do anything else. Wow, that, that's amazing. So, sir, uh, your final words to everyone that is watching us. So, everyone that is watching, I think the time has come for every youth to change their mindset, for every youth to study where the world is heading, that is moving into a digital world, not an analog world, and position yourself that when there's a complete changeover into a digital world, you will survive. Thank you so much, Seth. And I'll be talking to the main speaker who just uh, finished delivering this honorable Kwabnai Japan. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. Right, sir. Um, uh, talking to the youth uh, concerning um, diplomacy, um, uh, do you think there is a future for Africa in terms of uh, youth policies? I think it's important that once every generation, there should be a drastic, dynamic change in thinking and orientation. I think the youth are a bit demoralized. Um, they haven't seen the democracy dividend that they were expecting. And so there's a lot of despondency and despair. We have to encourage the youth that the countries are worth dying for. And the youth should be the drivers of change and cannot fall back and rely on the older generation to deliver the kind of generation of Africans that we want to see in the future. So they should be willing participants to work hard and it all depends on the values retaining and restoring the cherished values politics and governance should have a foundation political leaders should be courageous they should be compassionate and they should be competent and and that should be uh, underpinned by service sacrifice and selflessness and it's absolutely vital that the younger generation have these values and know that governance is about public service and what we say public service it means you're going to serve on leadership that you look for the common interests of the majority of the people especially the underprivileged in society we are supposed to provide a buffer to them to support them create solutions solve problems and generate the needed confidence that we need to spare the new generation on to take the commanding highs of both our local economies and driving progress. Thank you so much, sir. It's been a privilege talking to you. Your final word to the youth, especially in Ghana. Uh, what do you have to say to inspire them? What I want to tell the youth of this country, that we have a beautiful country, and the things that bring us together are more than the things that divide us. So it's important we emphasize on our values, our common shared values as Ghanaians, and we should be each other's keeper. And we should look ourselves as Ghanaians first. And we should be customer friendly. Whatever we do to be able to serve your fellow man. Once we have that fellow feeling and we work together and we are selfless in our outlook, I do think that we can build a very formidable and prosperous country where we can all live in. Thank you so much, sir, for giving us your time. All right. And, and so you can see from, from, from what they have shared, how shared. this has helped. Exactly. You know, I mean, to help them. I, I shared my experience to go back four years, you know, my first time attending the conference, uh -huh. you know, and how it has helped me get better as a person till today. So till today. And that's why I don't joke with platforms like this. And okay. I think more people should be more interested. Uh, women, uh, mothers, fathers should be interested uh, in instilling into their kids their words. Mm -hmm. Diplomacy. 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 All right. And so you say, uh, I know a lot of people have challenges with, with statements like, you're too diplomatic. Yeah, right. yeah, too but diplomatic. Then, but 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 then, <laughs> looking at it from uh -huh. a, a global uh, perspective, you discover uh -huh. that being too diplomatic is why we currently enjoy the peace that we that do. We enjoy. The degree okay. of peace that we do. Yeah. <laughs> it could be worse. But it could be worse. It could yeah, be worse. It could be worse. And, so, exactly. and so it helps us even in interpersonal relationships. Relationship. You know, okay. I don't get hostile with you. Okay. I don't use words that are against you. You know, I understand you. It also helps in terms of religion, religion tolerance. It also helps in entrepreneurship to be able to smartly identify opportunities instead of complaining. You know, so this is what uh, are many more things that okay. uh, we should talk about it all. By the way, Accra is a beautiful city. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you have you enjoyed um, Accra? Because uh, 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 where do you stay in Lagos? So that I uh, do you stay in Lagos? Actually? Yes, I, I visit okay. Lagos. Uh, so so for some of my people who might be watching this and say they, maybe I betrayed where I stay. No, no, <laughs> I don't stay in Lagos. Lagos is not the only city in Nigeria. Exactly. <laughs>
<laughs> so why do, why, why do you stay? <laughs> so I stay, I stay in Ekiti State. But Ekiti, I travel, okay, but yeah, I travel, travel. I travel a lot. I, okay. I'm, I'm always in Lagos, in, in Lagos, Abuja, okay. you know, those states in Port I've been to Ikeja. Ikeja. Lagos. Yeah, Ike, Ikeja is a part of Lagos. Yeah. Beautiful place. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. you should visit the mainland, the island. Yeah, I should. You know, I should. the old Nero beaches. I'm I always should. open. But, but then, Ghana is also another country. country. Where, mean, where have you been in Ghana? Where have you been to Okay, Ghana? so, so uh, the Freedom Park. The Freedom Park, okay. Uh, I have the best of my images at the Freedom, Freedom Park. Park, okay. Okay, so okay. right before the Freedom Park is that giant black star. Okay. Yeah, uh -huh. the, you know, where you can climb. Climb and, see and uh, yeah. The Freedom Park, I've been there. Uh -huh. uh, I've been, uh, I've been past the presidential villa. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've been spin text all the big malls. Spin text. Okay. <laughs> the avenue, the busy, uh -huh. the busy ones. Uh, uh -huh. uh, Volta re region. You've been to Volta region, okay? Volta, Volta region. region. I won't okay. forget. Beautiful okay. experience. Yeah. You know, the greenness. I mean, it's yeah. amazing. The neatness of the neatness, place. Yes. Yeah. Volta region is very nice. Absolutely. It's very nice. Absolutely green. You know, I, I, there are so many other places I've I visited, and I, I love it. You, so I, I, you I, love Ghana. I, I love Ghana. You I mean, should come and stay I'm here. Ghanian. I'm Ghanaian, by the way. They call, wow. me, they call me Kwame. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I my second coming. <laughs> okay, so Kwame A-Y. Yeah. So, okay. So back uh -huh. at home, when I talk, you know, on, on radio, uh -huh. uh, you know, I, I introduce myself as my Ghanaian friends call me Kwame. Kwame. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's uh -huh. a beautiful name. It's a beautiful name. Ghana's it's a beautiful name. Really you, you look like a Kwame, yeah, actually. Yeah, I do. That's All why right. it's so, so a good friend of mine. <laughs> and I love the name. You love it. Yeah. All right. Um, Let's talk about the youth in Ghana and the youth in Nigeria. Any difference? Uh, there's a wide range of difference. Uh, mm -hmm. and I must say that I've interacted with the youth in Nigeria uh, and a lot of them in Ghana. All okay. Right? And uh, mm -hmm. uh, the youth in Ghana are very, you know, uh, uh, serious. Let they're using Ghana. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh -huh. they, they are very maybe, serious. Very serious. It, okay. Maybe you've not observed. It's okay. tough for you to see anyone smile. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you talking based on my cameraman or you are? No, no, no. Are you, no, no. Because, me, uh -huh. I've had a wide range of interactions. Uh -huh. uh, they are very serious. serious. I mean, okay. oh, very serious uh -huh. people. Even in their businesses, they are, they are, they are serious. They are, they, are, they are pro to business is very serious, exactly. right? While I believe that there are other cultures, you know, regions that I might not have been interacted with, uh, mm -hmm. the Ashantis mm -hmm. and all of this, you know, but I just feel that generally the approaches, you know, because if I weigh, from the social resonations that mm -hmm. uh, Ghanaian youth have, you might want to say that no, it, it, it might be true. Because mm -hmm. if you look at the way uh, things trend in on social media, on social media. Uh, with Ga Ghanaians, mm -hmm. right? I've, I've been following the MPP development, and okay, and uh, I, I see how you people are addressing it. Mm -hmm. But we are, way, we are dragging them. them, yeah, you, you, uh, you are, guys are dragging them. We are dragging them, but but if it were in Nigeria. Nigeria. It will be worse. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean? We are serving the odds. So I, uh -huh. I, I, I love that about uh -huh. them, though. I love that about them. The fact that they are very serious-minded people. Mm -hmm. uh, they are very principled too. Right? They are very simple. Right? Okay. They are very civil. Large majority of yeah. them. Not, we not like we do not have the hard guys around. I've seen. I've been to ghettos to too. you know places that are very rough. You know, I've seen hard guys. But I mean, I, I love that culture i think the nature you there's a difference okay. all right there's a difference but when you talk about nigerian youth ah we're coming all all the shades uh, uh, serious, serious. Uh, serious. If, if you are doing music you're doing we are not too serious uh -huh. we are not serious you know? if you're doing music it gets, we're doing it. Yeah, we're yeah. not doing we're not doing it you know yeah. and then uh, I, I, on, on social media you know it, it seems that we we do a lot a lot of banter more. yeah well we're yeah. gonna your love and yeah so what's your stake? And and Boy. and yeah, Burna Boy. Boy. I, 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 I personally, I, I, should I say it? I love Burna Boy. Yeah. Oluwa Burna. Yeah, Oluwa Burna. I, I, I love it. I, I, I love him. I, I had to. Uh -huh. I fall in love with Shatawale. You love Shatawale. You know, there was so much drama mm -hmm. around him, and yeah. then I followed him. And then I noticed that this guy sometimes speaks truth, truth to exactly. authorities. authorities yeah. And then I have respect okay. for Shatawale. Okay. He just, he should just you like the way he talks? I like the way he talks. Can you mimic him? Uh, Let me say. <laughs> Fellow Ghanaians, uh -huh. uh, if you want to work, uh, work. If you want to do, ca -ca -ca -ca, do it, eh, Charlie? Don't just get caught. Uh. <laughs> I'm a government. These people don't, they don't, they don't respect us. Not they at don't, all. They, they don't respect. They don't. They don't, they don't, they don't. No. <laughs> 
following. Yeah, following. I've been following. I've been following. So I was asking, um, the youth in Africa, do you think there is a future? Right. But it's South Africa. It's African. So there's something in Africa that we as Africans have not come to appreciate. We have not come to know. We have not come to focus on. But other people are beginning to say it. They have come to our light, but maybe they don't want us to realize it fully. Some of us are, uh, we cannot be blind yet. So I, I dare say, with all of us, that the future of the world is Africa. The future of the world is Africa. The final watch to those who are watching us, what do you have to tell them, especially the youth? Young persons, I believe so much in the youth of Africa. I believe in our dexterity, I believe in our courage, I believe in our brilliance. Though they call us a third world country, but we produce the best brains in the world. We have been harvested all over the world. And that shows that we have potentials. So wherever in the social strata you found yourself, below, in the middle, on top, wherever it is, as an African youth, please rekindle the hope in yourself. Rekindle the hope in your hands. Find courage to survive and grow. And stay positive. Because only then will you be able to shine the light and then make us as a continent proud. I wish you well. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's uh, been a wonderful time talking to you. And uh, thank you so much for all that you are doing to inspire the youth in uh, Africa. So we have been speaking to the Secretary General of the International Youth Diplomacy Conference for this year. Uh, my name is Felix Dazi. For all your comments and uh, for everything that you want to say, whatever question that you want to ask, the number is showing on your screen. You can send us a message and definitely we will uh, reply to you. Definitely we'll do this with AY um, another time there. He will answer some of the questions that came as a result of this interview. Don't forget on YouTube, go on YouTube right now. I N S P I R A T I O N Inspiration with Felix as you can get it from there. We want you to subscribe, we want you to like and we want you to share. So that's what I'll see you on our next episode. Thank you.